Hi guys. How's everybody doing this wonderful Thanksgiving Eve? I couldn't resist, but I wanted to spend a few minutes sharing this morning's devotions. It really got me. And if I don't post this today, you'll see it tomorrow. But I really had to, to share just so much of what God's been doing for Ricky and I. Today, we got to go to Petco to help take care of the kitties that are there. They're really awesome, guys. Uh, we have four. There's a cutie pie named Ribbon. There's a black and white named Pogo Stick that's been pre-adopted, so he's going to be going home soon. And we have a beautiful calico named Poco. And we have a really beautiful beige-orange kitty named Confetti, and she's a sweetie. Right now, Ricky's at the cardiologist. So I've got some time here. And I wanted to really share more of this morning's devotions. There was something about it that really got me. I want to ask something. And I, I hope you guys, you know, understand what I'm about to ask. I've, I asked this this morning in, during, you know, on my post. But I am wondering if you've ever had an experience in which either you needed prayer never expressed it to anyone else, but later on found out that you were being prayed for by others? Or better yet, have you ever felt the need to just suddenly pray for somebody and found out later that your prayer was answered in, in a rather special and unique way? You just didn't know why you just felt led. I've heard of situations where people are led to pray for somebody, like for their safety or, or for, for something in particular that God just immediately burdened them on and God answered it. Uh, I've seen that. I know that this has happened to me in, uh, in more ways than one, both ways. And, you know, when I realize how much God has answered those prayers, it just blows my mind. And all I can do is give him thanks. You know, as I was reading this morning's devotions and seeing what Paul was writing, I can relate to that. I can relate to going through things like that in a sense, although I've, I've never, how do I put this? I was never put through exact, the exact same things that Paul had been through. I mean, I've been through things where I've been very depressed. We're going through something right now where Ricky and I are both stressed over it. I just got done dealing with for the second time in a row a very sleazy debt collection company collecting a debt that I didn't owe. And I had to get a lawyer who was willing to represent me at a very reasonable price that I'm still making payments on. You know, she's a very sweet woman and I praise God for her. I, I've seen just so many instances of where God has just been there for Ricky and I, and he's still here for us. I've seen instances in my family's life, you know, I don't know how else to say it. And I was going over something, and especially from last year, and it was something I wanted to share with you guys. This was uh, from last year, uh, around this time. And I want to ask something. What marvelous things has God done in your life? Is there anything really awesome that he's done in your life? Because I'll tell you right now, I find myself so truly blessed. I find myself so truly blessed and grateful to the Lord for everything that he's done for us. I was in particular reading something from Pastor Greg Laurie the other day in which... He spoke about the 10 lepers who were healed by Jesus and only one of them came back. And the one that came back happened to be a Samaritan. And I wanted to share that with you if possible, because it's something that really got me. It's out of the book of Luke, chapter 17. In particular, uh, I'm going to read this with you. Jesus basically encounters 
a group of 10 lepers. And they're, uh, all you can say is that they're, they're, they're in bad shape, is the only way to put it. It starts in verse 11. It says, And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And he fell down at his face, on his face, excuse me, at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the other nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. It's interesting with this passage because Pastor Greg describes it. He says how the story of these 10 men, they had a lot to give thanks for. You know, they were miraculously touched by Jesus. They're complete outcasts beforehand. And if you know about leprosy, it's really awful, guys. And it was the very scourge of society back then. And you couldn't get any lower at that point in that particular time in history with this disease. It was incurable. I think now they call it Legionnaire's disease. But bottom line, if you had it, you couldn't have any contact with anyone. You had to leave your family, your your whole, everything. And here are these men living in this isolated, miserable, ugly, lonely life. And they hear about Jesus. They hear about how he had touched others and healed them. So they st they're, they're from afar off calling out to the Lord, ask for his healing touch. And these men are in various stages of decay. Uh, a part of this, body parts would fall off. Fingers, toes, noses. Their clothing was ripped from perpetual mourning and, and their heads were skeletal. They probably were uncovered. And one of the things, part of this, it, that by law, they had to cry out unclean, unclean wherever they went. Jesus didn't respond to them with any kind of major drama or anything, special effects. He just said, go show yourselves to the priests. And they did. And as a result, they were healed. But the interesting thing is, only one, one decides to go back and give thanks. And I thought about that. When's the last time I thanked God? Just, I don't know how to describe it. Just simply thank him. Just for, for the mundane things. You know, I've been really grateful to the Lord for so much that he's doing in our lives right now. And sometimes I don't thank him right away, but I know that doesn't mean that God's going to get me. But I know, especially this year, I have so much to be grateful for, so much to be thankful for. And to see this Samaritan, who the Jews despised, looked down on, comes back to Jesus and shows thanks. And I find that so interesting. I find that so telling. And I had to ask myself, what marvelous things has God done for me that I should be thankful for? And that's something I wanted to challenge you guys with. I wanted to, to, to challenge you guys to find something that God has done. You know, think about what the marvelous things that God has done in your life maybe throughout this year, maybe just recently. And think about those things and don't be afraid to tell him how much you appreciate him. Feel free to write them down and share them with your family tomorrow. Or if it's Thanksgiving Day, you know, share it, share it that day. But I pray most of all that you realize, that you remember what Thanksgiving is really all about and remember to show God the true gratitude and thanks that he deserves. That's something that I pray for, not just for myself, but for all of you. I've got to close this because I'm certain Ricky's going to be here very shortly. But I wish you all a really wonderful Thanksgiving tomorrow.
and uh, try not to be overcome by the turkey coma. Bye. <laughs>